Hello everybody, Spirit Gaming here and welcome to my Reaper guide. Before this video starts, I would like to ask for you to subscribe. I have done many guides similar to this one for all classes and more updated ones are coming really soon. Also, while you are near the subscribe button, like the video and help me fight through the YouTube algorithm. Also, join my Discord where we have over 400 players chatting daily and talking about tips, tricks, builds and more. But I want to say that in this video we won't be going over our skills. So if you want to learn what the skills actually do as a beginner, I will post a link of my beginner's guide video down below. So without any further ado, let's start with the video. We will be taking a look at a lot of different topics, meaning we will take a look at stats, cores, pets, allies, drags, set pieces, EX abilities, PvE and PvP, talent and deep talents, some skill rotations and lastly some tips and tricks. Also, I just want to specify that no one knows what the best build is since there are so many secrets in the stats of this game. It is impossible to know what the actual best build is, but I want to talk about my build and what I think is the best one. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start with the stats. I will write them on the screen as well, but I will read them out based on importance as well. You want magic attack, earth attack, AP, cooldown reduction, crit level, multi strike and intelligence. What I want to do is get magic attack, earth attack, AP, cooldown reduction and crit level on all my gear pieces, but for multi strike and intelligence, I want to place them half and half. So if you have 10 gear pieces, I will place 5 intelligence and 5 multi strike. If I have 8 gear pieces like an SEA, I will place 4 intelligence and 4 MS stats. And that is pretty much it about the stats, now let's take a look at the cores. Right now the main stats by importance go like this for any class, intelligence, insight, dexterity and constitution. That means we want to focus on intelligence and insight the most. So we run 9 fire gems, 5 water gems and 2 wind gems. The reason for this is that we want a lot of AP and cooldown reduction which the water gems give us, but as well we want a lot of magic attack and a bit of multi strike since we don't get too much multi strike from our gear pieces. But also I know some people want to run 9 fire 5 wind, but I feel like that's just a waste of 5 gem slots. Since everyone has got a lot of multi strike and crit level at this point in time and we want AP and cooldown reduction as much as we can get, but then again even if you get 9 fire and 5 wind gems that is fine as well. But again I will say choose what's the best for you, my recommendation again I will say is 9 fire, 5 water and 2 wind gems. Next up are the pets. I will mainly talk about the assist skills of both light and dark pets. For light pet we want crit blessing and water magic. This is simple, crit blessing increases your actual crit percent rate and not your crit level. So yes, it's literally a crit percent rate increase. And water magic increases our damage by 20%. For the dark pet we want adorable mode and darkness mastery. Now for the adorable mode it is obvious we actually lower the target's magic defense by 20% meaning we increase our damage dealt to them by 20% as well. However, I want to place Darkness Mastery on the second slot, but I'm not sure which one should be used for right now. But I did find this pet skill assist to work very good, and with that out of the way, let's talk about pet refactors. We want all the damaging stuff, meaning we want attack, AP, wound reduction, mood strike and crit level pet refactors. And for the chips, we want Chip Snake and Chip Snow Wolf. As for allies, definitely we want Eri in the center, for supports we want Ming Zilu, Nono, Chizy Yan for the bond, Johan Chu, and personally I would go Anju, but I know most people want to use Caesar instead, so use either of these allies and you will be good to go. But obviously not everyone has this setup, so for free to play players like me, out there, you know, the unlucky ones, like I was 2 weeks ago, you can use a few 5 star allies as well, like my Sakatu, or Kore Jimmy again. Now even College Airy is not a bad choice, even though yes it is a 6 star but I know many of you have it, but yeah College Airy is not a bad choice either. Next up are some nice drags. For orange drags we want a Galaxian Explosion. For the head we don't use any orange Draconic. For the clothes we want Unbreakable Will. For the gloves we want Hella Smile. Pants we want Lift Restriction. For the boots we want Wind Tamer. For the necklace we want kill shot, for the ring we want whispers of the ancient god, and for us on global, on the blazer we want withdrawing, and on the belt we want wailing of the dead. Now for the yellow draconics we want hella sigh on the weapon, 
Verdantin's enlightenment on the head. For the clothes, I would personally leave Unbreakable Will there for the utility, but if you really want, you can get even Drango Blood. For the gloves, you want Urs Directions. For the pants, we want Blood Rage. And again, for the boots, I would leave Wind Timer in, but you can get Endless Thirst instead. For the necklace, we want Sigh of Underworld. For the ring, we want Fine Weakness. Bracelet, we want Lust of War. And lastly, we want Nolo Power for the belt. These are the Jaconics I recommend, but that does not mean that they are the best. Obviously, I have not had a chance to test many of these. So, I'm just going off by theory that these racks are the best. Next up are the sets. For the level 90 sets, we always want 6 Wolf Scheme, but for PvE we want 4 Fairy String and for PvP we want 4 of Reviving Arobas. However, for the level 100 set pieces, it is really up to you. You can go with a lot of tankiness from Frost Giant and get in the chance to not get critical hit for 10 seconds, which is amazing. But I would personally recommend the same setup again. So we want 6 of Fenrir Scheme, and for PvE we want 4 of Valkyrie String, and for PvP we want 4 of Reviving Kraken. And now we have finally come to the plans. And we will start with the EX skills first. Mainly we use King's Servant for PvE and Netherlight for PvP. Those are, those are easy choices, but the other EX skills, that's kinda difficult and I feel like it's personal preference. So for bosses that can get hit by the Scorch debuff, in PvE we use Scorch, otherwise we use Tyrant Clap and Glacier or Fire Tornado. What this means is that in Dragon Slayer you can use Thunder Clap once and then change your EX to a different one with a higher cooldown. For example, we use Thunder Clap and then when our cooldown is off, we replace the Thunder Clap with Glacier or Fire Tornado. Next for PvP I personally always use Rail Fire for the damage dealt decrease and decrease defenses, but many people go with Scorch, Holy Judgment or Creed. Again, I will say this is just personal preference. And now everyone, we get to the fun part. And we will review my plans for PvE and PvP. Obviously, I will say this again, like the third time now. If I say this, these are good, that does not mean that someone has not figured out a better build or better skill rotation. This is just what I use and what I find the best. So for PvP, we want the Strain Chain, Cat's Walk, Shadow Recall and Cat's Tangle. Really self-explanatory. The Strain Chain is for the damage and for the ability to never miss. Yes, this is the talent that kills all Blade Masters and make them useless in the game. Next is Cat's Walk. This talent gives us super armor every 2 seconds. We use Cat's Kiss, which has a 3 second cooldown. But it also decreases energy consumption from our normal attacks and increases their damage with 3%. Shadow Recall is used to be able to get out of sticky situation and heal up to the HP you had 4 seconds before you use Phantom Raven skill. And lastly, Cast Tango. This talent lets us spam Destruction Blast and gives us a nice super armor whenever we go into Cat's form. For the deep talents, I will show you once for the SEA and once for the global. I will start with the global first. We want the whole left side maxed out, except the pain deep talent. In the middle we want Heart Expansion and Magic Stamina maxed as well. And lastly on the right side we want Torture and Hit Up maxed out. And of course we have 3 points left and we place those into Hunt. Now for the PvE talents we actually use the exact same page except the A level talent which is Drain. For the deep talents it is close to the same again, we max out the whole left side but now we don't max out Smooth Move and everything else is just the same. Level 90 talents are the same, but obviously you don't have level 100 deep talents unlocked, so for the people below level 90, here is the deep talent PvE page. We don't use Kla now, since that would be a waste of skill points and we actually never use Phantom Spectral Cat in the PvE skill rotation, since it does not do enough damage compared to the time the skill needs to activate. But this is only for level 90, uh, however for level 100 and up, people use Phantom Spectral Cat and that's really a must. For PvP we actually use the exact same page, except we take one point out of Hunt and we place it in Smooth Move. Now we get to the level 100 PvE skill rotations. The only difference between the level 100 and the level 90 skill rotation is that you don't use the clone when you're level 90, 
since that is just a waste of time. While on level 100 it actually gives you damage through whole skill rotation because of the deep talent we got at level 100. But the main thing you want to focus on in this rotation is using two normal attacks before using the chain. I won't be explaining this further but I got the lowest time using this two rotation. With different builds, other skill rotations might work better or worse than this one, so test it on your own. But just watch this and if you can't see it well, turn on slow motion. I'm really sorry but as I said I'm really bad at explaining these things so if I try I might ruin the whole video just because of me trying to explain the skill rotation. For the PvP rotation though, sadly there is none. Every PvP fight is completely different, you just have to watch your super armor when you are in raven form especially, use your dodge skill a lot so you get constant super armor. Same goes in cat form but mostly you want to use cat skills there. Now the tips and tricks part which I have nothing much to say either on to be honest but I will go over the ones I know. The first tip is to use your dash skill out a lot especially if you have wind tamer and unbreakable will draconics. The reason for this is that if you get silenced or ducked once by a soul dancer then you're dead for sure. Other abilities won't work on you since really you can get out of any of them using your inbuilt dash skill abilities like Cat's Kiss. Next up is silencing a group of people out of nowhere using Raven skill in Raven form. And for my last tip, I would like to say experiment on your own. Try to find your own playstyles, learn how to beat people using your clones. Basically all I want to say is play this class until you get bored of it, because I know I got bored of this class from the day it came out, but if you like it then play it even more. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this guide. This is one of the best guides I have ever made, so like and a subscribe would be definitely appreciated. Also join my discord for a lot of information about Dren Raja and other games. And as always, see you next time.